Good morning, church. It is good to be with you again today, and I am excited that we're in the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah is the most quoted book in the uh, New Testament. One guy who averaged these things out says that one in every 17 New Testament verses is a quotation from the book of Isaiah. That is a lot of Isaiah. So we are looking forward to going through that, beginning to see how he connects in the timeline to what is happening with the kings. You can see from the introduction, his prophecy span is very long. He had like a 60, 65 year time as a prophet, just huge. And his first chapter is both very frightening and very hopeful, has one of the most hopeful verses, I think, in the Old Testament. Verse 18, he says, Come and let us settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are crimson red, they will be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And in 10 through 15, just like he told prophet Amos, I don't want your feasts when you are sinning. I want you to love righteousness and justice. Keep your burnt offerings. Come and give yourself to me in earnest. We're reminded over and over and over again, we can't buy off God by some by thinking we can come and do these uh, religious seeming things God wants our whole life and so that's again the, the endless encouragement is to live our lives for Jesus according to his will that he reveals in scripture and when we go to him in prayer and he strengthens us for that so then we go to Titus and we get this this line Verse 14, chapter 3, Let our people learn to devote themselves to good works for pressing needs so they will not be unfruitful. Devote yourself to good works for pressing needs. Now, before I dive into that, there's one cool point that I wanted to make out of, um, out of Titus. I think we have the clearest connection with Jesus as God in Titus. Maybe Philippians chapter 2 is the just as clear, you know, having the form of godliness. But in verse 4, and he did this again in chapter 1, we just didn't talk about it then. But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. And then we go down to verse 6, it says he poured out his spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. He uses both God our Savior, Jesus Christ our Savior, conflating those two and creating some parallelism there for us to understand. It's always good for us to pick out where we're seeing Jesus and his divinity because that is a point that is exclusive to our Christian faith. This sets us apart from all other faith claims and cult claims is Jesus God. Christians must answer yes. He's not a God. He's not a created God. He is God. Part of He is the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. So he is the person of the Son in the Trinity, fully God and fully human. And we have to be able to confess that confidently. And our confidence is, of course, founded on the truths revealed in scripture and this part is just one one of those parts where we see that reality played out plainly for us so i appreciate that in paul today so then we go back to verse 14 let our people learn to devote themselves to good works for pressing needs so they will not be unfruitful devote yourself to it you know because we're saved by faith alone, sometimes we devalue working for the Lord. Paul says here, mm, don't devalue that. Devote yourself 
to good works for pressing needs. Um, Isaiah says, you know, care, be, give justice to the widows, give justice to the orphans, the fatherless, the poor and the needy, those who can't defend themselves. He gives us the list of things that Paul says we ought to devote ourselves to. So it's not a, really a mystery. It's just showing love and compassion. It's going out and providing people who can't provide for themselves, not who won't, but who can't, and who need the love of God demonstrated in their life. The only way we can do that is by building relationships with the people around us, being good neighbors, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so that's my encouragement today. Of all the encouragements today, let's think uh, at the end about being neighborly, about devoting ourselves to good works, trusting God's promise that he will make us white as snow and loving him with our whole hearts.